Hey ladies, hey everybody. Peace, love, joy, happiness, laughter. Only y'all can get me out of my relaxed mode to come downstairs and sit behind this camera and dialogue. Y'all know I've been in this spiritual meditative space for like the last three years. So YouTube really is like, really, uh, as I try to enjoy, or I'm learning to enjoy the plethora of options, the infinite possibilities of what I'm going to watch. I got a zit too, but we're going to talk about how to get rid of that on one of the other videos. <laughs> I got it from my black seed oil, which is uh, in the skincare regimen I want to tell you ladies about, because if you're not uh, prone to breakage, it's going to be breaking out. It's the best thing for your skin as I digressed or, but I digressed. So I'm flipping through uh, some channels I've been subscribing to since I started this channel. I'm just not a TV person or a video watching individual. And I'm enjoying the platform and the fact that you have an infinite number of options of what you want to watch. And when you dig these channels or these personalities that are engaging, you can't help but just keep watching them, right? And they may not, it could be a hair channel and they may not be talking about hair per se, but you dig them, right? Or you dig their view. So I, I stumbled upon Joyce MD. She has a channel uh, for her natural locks and apparently she just went uh, back to a relaxer, right? So I was cracking up because I love her personality and she was talking about how the natural hairstylers, I guess, or people who wear their hair natural or, or wear natural, who, or wear <laughs> styles for natural hair. I'm giving light to, I think Shan is her name, who educated me on the fact that this is not natural hair, but it is, is a style for natural hair. So y'all just indulge me. Um, cause that's right. So, uh, she, she decided to go to natural hair and she was, she had me cracking up because I'm just loving her video and she's going into this long explanation and I'm just following along and I'm having a good time because she's alluding to the fact that people in the natural hair community, uh, she said they'd be going ham and I, you know, I'm like, well, what is ham? You know, I'm, I'm almost 50. What, what is ham? Obviously ham means, I guess, going postal or tripping, tripping, right? For all y'all in my generation, they be tripping. And she said, <laughs> at the end of the video, she was like, don't come for me, y'all. You know, I'm, I'm open to you guys giving a little dialogue and telling me how y'all feel, but you know, don't be coming for me. And I just cracked up. Right. And so I had to ask myself the question. I said, well, what is the issue with why um, because in my comment, I said, basically, I said a lot, y'all know I say a lot, but essentially I said, you know, shit, you're lovely. Whatever the hell you do with your hair is your thing. I have a ball. But the other more poignant point of view, the more, um, focused point of view that I found that I had, because as I was listening to her channel, I was like, well, yeah. but I said, you know, fundamentally, when the hell are we going to elevate above this conversation? How long are we um, going to continue to make hair an issue and make it a source of ridicule or a source of judgment or whatever? Like it seems to be consuming on some level. And she, she made a comment in her video that, um, um, damn, lost my train of thought. That happens every now and then. Um, yeah. So how long are we going to make this a uh, dialogue? Yeah. Someone in the comments, not Joyce, but someone in the comments was, um, a lot of people in the comment sections were talking about the health or the lack thereof you know, of, of, the, of the relaxers and the chemicals. And that's legitimate. I mean, literally, like I remember guys, and this is no lie. I think it was, this is when I was turned on to Mazzani perms. Uh, I was going to say six years ago, but damn, it's been that long, maybe eight or nine years ago. And I was always this person. And if y'all saw me dye my hair, I probably mentioned this. I just go get to work without the gloves, you know, this is not very real. I'm just going to, you know, perm my hair, you know, these chemicals, whatever they do, this is not going to be a big deal. 
I remember that weekend perming my hair and I also laid some tile on my kitchen floor so my hands were in grout. But whenever I would do my hair, even when it was color, not realizing the seriousness of the fact that your skin is your largest organ, and even when I would clean the house with chemicals, just be haphazard. The same way I've been with my skin over the years until more recently, just be haphazard. And uh, what they say? Uh... Uh, go ahead and do it and ask for permission later or, you know, accept the consequences later. But I remember as a part of um, one of my classes for my students, um, having going to the natural practitioner or one of the herbal stores and having a, I wish I could remember what the name of it was, guys, but it was a cellular, I wanted to see my, my cellular um, structure. It's, it's not structure, but I just can't think of the name of it where they take a drop of your blood and they look down in there. It's like 10 or 15 bucks, maybe 20. And they tell you what proteins you're digesting well. You can see levels of toxicity. You're able to see, um, you know, your, your little blood cells, they should be plump little pancakes just swimming through the ocean of life, which happens to be your plasma or your blood or whatever you want to call it. And they should just be moving through happily, you know, looking at the beautiful terrain of the inner landscape of your lovely body, your healthy body. And I'm not lying to you. My junk was stacked up like pancakes, like flapjacks, like on one of them Paul Bunyan commercials from way back in the day. We had like 10 flapjacks like that. Some of my junk looked like that. And then the areas that he just, then I saw these areas that were like, ah, like the, 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 around the, 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 the little fluffy pancakes that were floating kind of, in, 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 in isolation, the ones that weren't all stacked up crazy, there were um, these splotches of black. And then in other spaces, these splotches of orange. And he was telling me that those had to do with high levels of tex to toxicity. And so having come the previous weekend or the few days earlier out of this perming with no gloves and all of that, I immediately intuitively made the connection between my, my hands being in those chemicals and not taking the necessary precautions and that. And so I was really stunned by that. And it shook me. And I realized at that point, stop taking chances. You know, obviously, just because you can't see something doesn't mean that it's damaging. But I'm not saying that to say that you shouldn't get a relaxer. That was my pivotal moment. That was my opener. So but I posed the question. We're, we're concerned about that. And we talk a lot about that. But how many of us invest in quality water? Um, over a pair of expensive shoes or how many of us give up the fried food or how many of us didn't get the memo maybe about smoking or maybe about the multitude of other things, whether it's the fluoride in your toothpaste or all of the parabens and sulfates that are in the soap that you continue to use each and every day that's saturating your, your body and, and creating a toxic overload. Or if you're just sitting on the sofa and you're not working out and you're not exercising and your body is picking up the toxins in the air you breathe, the water you drink, the crap you watch on TV, the stuff you feed your soul. How many of us are really focusing in on that, but we're going to harp on somebody about um, a relaxer and then we're going to make it about health. So is it really about health or is it about something else? So that's what made me come down here and sit behind this table while I was upstairs relaxing, having finished a lovely wealth co-creation oracle spread along with a life purpose one just to see the new cards just came in and I unboxed them I just wanted to see how accurate it was before I actually put any energy into the deck and it was damn accurate y'all this stuff damn accurate it's just just amazing so I got up and I said you know what I gotta get down there and talk to my lady friends and I need to find out y'all what is in your estimation what is this hair um, thing really about? What is this need to focus around hair really about the root of it? And I want you to dig deep. I want you to really dig deep because I'm digging deep because literally I have these locks, but these locks don't define me. I damn sure don't think I'm any better than anybody because I decided to do something with natural hair. Now, before I had these, I had gone natural, but I went natural because I my hair was long and I put, I told you guys, I used dye and then I, no, I used henna first. I had been using henna for some time, which transforms or does something to the ionic structure of the hair. In my ignorance, I turned around and put some color in my hair and I started experiencing a lot of breakage. And rather than deal with the trauma of losing my hair, 
I just decided to cut short the suffering and cut my hair very, very short. And then I started from about here and I was doing twists and I was doing all that and having to realize, damn, I really forgot how to maintain my natural hair. What the crap? I remember blow drying it, you know, and trying to repeat what I was used to when I wasn't twisting, which was straight hair and um, blow drying it. And then by the time I walked downstairs, I lie to you not. Even when my mother used to press my hair growing up, I was a kid who by an hour after she washed all three girls hair that had long hair, blow dried everybody's hair, curled, uh, straightened everybody's hair at the stove and then curled it with them, them, them old curlers that they used to use, right? Them, <laughs> my grandmother used to use those in her little salon in the kitchen. So yeah. And, um, only to find that by the time I got downstairs, shit, the jump was drawing up, right? So as I watch my daughter now go through her journey of natural hair, I'm like, man, I wish I, sometimes I'm really like, I wish I had hung in there a little bit longer. Sometimes I want a big afro. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes I want a, a braid out and just see what my, my hair would have really been like if I had learned to really style it and if I had the patience but at the time I didn't have the patience I didn't have the and I, I I consider myself I mean I was a person who at five years old started doing my own hair my mother never had to do it again in college I used to put in people's box braids and make money I used to put in my own box braids I used to do hair weaves on the side for money when I was in college and so I was a person who did a lot of experimenting with hands and knew something about hair come from a family of beauticians Yet, I just didn't have the know-how at the time or the patience or the wherewithal to, to learn. And I just gave up. I'm like, okay, this is what the nat natural journey is about. I got to, I got to, this is, I got to be able to do something with this. And I was tired of twisting. I wanted my twist to look a certain way and I didn't like it getting all crazy. I needed to feel manicured. So I knew I wasn't going to be doing this every three or four days. So even though it was fun for me, and it was, and I got a lot from it, I began to look for something that uh, I, I, I'm trying to go back into my mind. When did I decide that I didn't want to go back to a relaxer? Because I, I wanted to move into another transition that was still natural, but that would be easier. And so hence, dun, 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 here we are. So even today, I feel that... Um, if I took these out, I just can't see myself going back to a perm ever. But you never know. That's the thing about life. You never know what you're going to do. And the more I increase in my level of spirituality, the more I stop saying what I'm never going to do because you don't ever know what your situation and circumstances will be. You never know what the hell you're going to evolve into or evolve away from or evolve and regress back to whether it's hair or anything else and and who gets to decide what the hell a regression is anyway but um so yeah i um i don't think i would ever go back to chemicals only because as even even still as i walk and i explore and i start to look at the the sisters with the different the multitude of ways that they wear their hair, I'm captivated as if I'm from another race. I'm actually captivated. I'm like, damn, we can do all this with our hair. God has created a goddess here on this planet when he created us. So I'm just in awe of it. And I'm like, straight is boring, right? But, 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 but you just never know. So as I began to, to look at that and say to myself, I know I probably wouldn't go back. I still can't understand what people's hang up is and why people would go ham or go postal or start tripping on someone who left the natural hair community and decided to go back to a relaxer. So I needed to say like, when are we going to elevate? Like, isn't this an old paradigm that we need to move away from? Aren't there more important things that we need to spend our time around? And if you look at the planetary needs, and if you look at needs as it relates to health and wellness and identity, when are we going to move beyond this to the point to where we're not so impassioned by it, to the point to where we have to criticize other people and judge them for the choices they make? So I found myself in that little space saying, well, what is it really about? Like, Am I missing something? I consider myself, for the most part, a middle of the road person. I try to find equanimity when it comes to certain things. I try to um, use moderation. Now I can be crazy too, but again, that's my 
my spiritual challenge and there's something I've been working on and I've made a lot of progress. And in my trying to have a bird's eye view or be have a witnessing view or an observer view of what's going on down here amongst us little three deers down here on the planet Earth, those, those of us who are in that 3D space, um, and I'm not in the 3D space, uh, but I try to find out what is the value in this. When you look at where our community is going and where we, where things are headed, when I consider my ethnocentrism of my later teenage years and my 20s, my all the way up through probably maybe the end of my 20s, maybe some of the beginning of my 30s, I've sort of evolved away from some of, some of that. Um, I still know who the hell I am, but I have embraced a more... Um, Naima, I think she, I think one of my kids was, was laughing at me. Were you laughing at me? She, she knows I'm down here. I guess you can say doing the, I don't call it a rant, but <laughs> she's laughing at me. Hey, Naima, Naima, do you want to meet my, um, let me introduce you guys to my daughter. So fit Naima, come on. I just want to introduce you guys to my daughter. She is a, she just turned 21. She's that kid who refused to go off to college. She wanted to stay home. So she commutes to Georgia State, but she's in her senior year. And before she came, she took her ponytail out. Come on, Naima, come on. She's trying to be cute. But this is my daughter, Naima, everybody. This is my, my, my girl who is 21 going on Sweet 15. And I love her soul. She is sweet to God. So Naima, say hi to my sister lockers. Hi. And all, my, all the natural people who might see the channel. Hello. Do you have anything would you like to say, Naima? How about why you spent time straightening your hair? Uh, after wearing it curly for months and months, she decided to straighten her hair, and it looks beautiful. But I always tell her, if my hair was as curly as hers naturally, there's no way in the hell I would be trying to straighten it at all. It just looks so beautiful. Why did you straighten it, Naima? I do it every once in a while, um, like once every few months. It's not a big deal to me. Okay. I wear both ways. What if I didn't like you straightening it and I said you were running away from your identity or who you were? You were trying to embrace what white people look like by straightening your hair. What would be your response to that? I don't think this so. is all organic, guys. I want to hear what she has to say, too. What would you say, Nye? I don't think that you would say that. But I'm saying, suppose I did say that. If I said, Naima, why do you keep trying to change your natural curls? Why can't you just embrace who you are? What, what would you say? It's what do you think? It's not about embracing who I am. It's just my own personal preference. I like how it looks on me. I'm not copying anybody else. But that's how white people's hair look. Their hair is straight. Your hair naturally is curly. I just chose, it's just my own personal choice. Don't you think you're making a political statement by wearing your hair like that? No. Why not? No, that's a bit of a stretch. <laughs> that's a bit of a stretch, she says. Why, though? Look <laughs> at me. I'm all natural. Sophia's natural. What's your deal? You're natural, too, but you're straightening your hair. What's, what's up with that? I didn't come on here for this. <laughs> she said she didn't come on here. I could hold her if she was 15, but she's 21. I got to let her go. Bye, Naima. Thank you. <laughs> so, okay, guys. So, I appreciate that, baby. I did good to get her over here on camera. That's Naima. She's not going to engage any craziness. But, um... Yeah, so I wanted to know, like, what is it really about? Is it about um, people having options? Is it about the diversity of different beauty? Is it about doing whatever you want to do? Is it about some deeply held insecurities that people have that we need to look a certain way? Have we forgotten that it is our genome that has given rise to the diversity of all peoples across the planet? Have we forgotten that Adam and Eve technically came from... Uh, Africa, that the mitochondria that permeates the DNA of every human being in this universe goes back to one, which is us, and that we created all diversity, that we produce all color shades, that we produce the individuals that then migrated out of the center of Africa into other parts of the world who we now call Caucasians, who my husband calls our rebellious children. They're our rebellious children. Have we forgotten that we give birth to all of that and that in doing that, there are just some things that maybe we need to be willing to look broader at just to consider, like just consider for a moment when you think about that one statement that we have given birth to and rise to all of the possibilities for colors and, 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 and breeding. I don't want to say breeding because we're not animals, but um, the diversity of the human, human um, prototype, whatever you hell you want to refer to it as. So why, why do we get so upset 
I love a sister if she's got a relaxer. I used to feel some kind of way about wigs. But when I look at how creative we can use those things, when I, when I start to look at the things that I used to have a problem with black people doing, and I examined the reasons why I had a problem with those things, I think maybe it was more of an inferiority complex that we inherited through social conditioning. I'm speaking for myself than the actual thing. When I start to go back and look at the ideology or the root of some of those things, do you understand? For example, um, this thing with this dancing all the time, you know, there was a point in time in my own evolution where I was like, well, damn, you know, want to shake our ass. We want to dance all the time, but we're going to put our heads in the damn book. You know, when we're going to do this, when we're going to do that, being on my pulpit and judging. And now I say to myself, you know what? That is a way, an amazing way that we created to balance our chakras, to connect with our earth energy, to connect with our spirit energy. Um, that goes, that's a part of our roots. That's a part of our very essence. Not only that, it's a way to be, to feel fulfilled. It's a way to be happy. And it's one of the quickest ways other than gratitude and love and peace to elevate your vibration. So it's now a beautiful thing to me. And as I begin to pay more attention to it, in a way that's not critical, I have a greater level of appreciation for it. When it was my husband who reminded me when I used to, some years ago, uh, have something to say about the red wigs and the orange wigs and the, all this old crazy, what I say, crazy color stuff, which sometimes still I find myself having to remind myself of my ideal rather than where I may go by default sometimes because none of us are perfect. Um, when you think about and you go back to some of the indigenous tribes or cultures in Africa, color is is widely um, experimented with and demonstrated with. You are your landscape, whether you are painting your face um, or whether you are coloring your hair and wearing all of these different hair colors and paints. Um, I have some beautiful historical books which show all of the different tribes of Africa. And I'm amazed when I look at some of that stuff. And I remember he and I having a discussion and saying, damn, that's, that's where some of that stuff comes from. That stuff is genetic. Like, so my point is we are creative as hell. If you look at Africans, people in the African diaspora, African-Americans, wherever you come from, y'all, we take something and although we can mess it up, we take something and we transmute it into something amazing. There is no end to the level of creativity and it's amazing. And I find it somehow on some level distinctly different and distinctly unique and cultural. So I'm beginning to have a different level of appreciation for certain things that before I criticize due to my narrow mindedness and my ignorance and my inability to expand my mind. So I'm asking the question again, and then I'm going to shut up because I'm at 23 minutes. I'm asking the question, what is the hype around hair, whether it's natural or relaxed or whatever? What's the beef? And when you, when you, when you respond, I want you to really consider the deeper issue. Go to the spiritual level, the mental level, the emotional level. Try to take the response beyond the physical. I would love to hear what you have to say because I'm challenging myself to get at some of my old paradigms and some of my beliefs about things that really don't make sense anymore. In the greater scheme of things and in terms of my spiritual grounding and elevating and uplifting, what difference does it make? Now, I believe that this is a spiritual journey. I believe, I, I believe, somebody else thinks I'm kook, kook, I'm a kook. I believe that these stresses are connected to our nervous system. I believe that there's energy that's encoded ancestral energy that is encoded in our hair and that this is a serious part of our identity and that there's some value in this and that the creator did just did, just did not put this here for um, pomp and circumstance or for us to look good and for us to do whatever it is we do with it. So that's my belief though. And I feel, I happen to feel that that is an enlightened belief, but because I think I know what I believe is right, because what do we know about what we don't know that we don't know? Really, all we know is what we know and what we think we know is what we believe. And what we believe is what we actually think is real. And that's what we judge the world by. But don't nobody damn know. It's just too much damn shit out there. 
that you don't know. If, if we don't even, can't even conceive of, but about 4% of the universe and the rest is dark matter, what the hell does that tell us? If the eye can't even process less than 10% of what we should actually be able to see with our brains, what does that tell us? If they talk about of the three DNA strands, I mean, of all of our DNA strands, only three of them are recognizable and the rest they like to call junk DNA, which we know is a bunch of crap because they don't understand it. They want to reduce it to some big unknown that doesn't have any value. There's, my point is that it's too vast. It's too big. And your journey here is to focus on things that bring light, not to be a part of things that create chaos and, and, and or to, to work for the upliftment of humankind or to do the kinds of things that um, uh, uplift the consciousness, whether it be yours or anybody else, or to, to, to speak about justice. If I'm going to get upset about something and I'm going to be rageful about something, it's going to have something to do about justice and what's right. And it's going to be about either economic empowerment or the need for the masses to cut the crap out and to start to really focus their minds around things that are important. I'm not going to waste my time on a lot of trivia all the time. To the point to where I've got to judge somebody for what they're wearing, what they're doing. Hell, there's so many things I did due to a lack of awareness or a lack of enlightenment, if there's even such a thing, um, over the course of my life that I could judge myself for every day. But hell, I don't. I mean, we wake up anew every day, right? We are reborn Every day you have another opportunity to take your life in a new direction. So let the past go. Take the shackles off. Haven't we been crying about some of this stuff for too long, people? The longer you stay steeped in this past struggle, this past paradigm, this past phenomena, the longer you hold yourself back and you cannot be a witness to the beauty and abundance that is around you. I believe that. Both my parents were active. My dad was a part of the Revolutionary Action Movement, which gave rise to the Black Panther Movement. They, they came in under the Nation of Islam and then switched over to Sunni Islam. And so my whole life, I heard about, you know, African-Americans, the struggle. My dad could sit here on this channel and probably wear me out when it came to certain topics. He could wear anybody out. You ain't going to talk to him about nobody's history on the planet, including ours, and come out like you know something. So what I'm saying is though, um, for me, holding that stuff in put me in a reactive space, in a space of um, just needing to always be offering up resistance to something or, um, uh, yeah, offering up resistance to something. Or I was like, for example, when I was in college, I went to a Villanova University, Big Ten School. Y'all know about Villanova, all those um, lot of Caucasians there. In my, graduating in my graduating class, we started out with 50. We ended up with 17 in the graduating class. So, And my class was the largest class of black people ever. I got to plug this in, guys. I'm sorry. Oh, no, I can do it from here. So this is not just something I'm messing around about. And I was always responding to... Um, uh, conservative elitists uh, posts and editorials in the school newspaper and and all of that. I mean, we, we were outnumbered and it felt like that as well. So it was a, quite an experience. And um, that shaped who I who I who I was at that time. Um, so I feel like where I am now, I'm not so far removed from that in the sense that I'm not conscious and it's not important to me and I don't know who I am. I take pride in my blackness, every part of it. But at the same time, I don't I'm not as critical of us as I used to be. Now, have I have I lost um a bit of um do I feel like we got a world full of fool, fools out there and that the the, the 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 environment is crazy and that we are um denigrating into something that doesn't represent the true nature of who we are at this particular time in our evolution. Heck, heck yeah. But um, at the same time, I'm not consumed with it. I'm not consumed with it because it's got a direction and a course that is out of my hands. It's out of your hands. It's out of everybody's hands. And um, there's a purpose behind, behind all of this. So I'm not going to let it incite me because that's just where I need to be. I need to have peace of mind, guys. I need to 
<laughs> be able to do my namaste thing. And I can't do that worried about what the uh, what's going on over there or what somebody black said over here or what somebody white said about somebody black and being caught up in all of that negativity. It drives my vibration down quicker than anything else. So in order to protect myself and my sensitive nature, energetically, I'm very sensitive. I have to let some of that stuff go. So that's what's giving me peace in my life. So I have no reason why not to. That caused me to take maybe five or 10 years off my face and off my sickness of my body and so many other things. So I figure like, shit, that's working for me. But tell me what you think. And I'm really getting ready to go this time. I love y'all. If you haven't subscribed and you made it to this part of the video, do not forget to subscribe. I'm being told to remind people to subscribe. Initially, I, th I was thinking to myself, why do I need to be like everybody else and remind people to subscribe? If you're watching something of value, you will subscribe, right? That's just the natural nature of things. At least that's what I was, what I think when I'm watching a channel. If I like it, I subscribe. If I see something that seems like it has potential, I'll usually subscribe because I figure what, what's, what's it going to harm? What's, what's the harm, right? I can always not get the notifications or turn them off. But anyway, subscribe, like, share, and ladies, comment. I want to know again what the hair thing is all about. What is the beef about natural hair or relaxed hair? And why do you think it's really important? What is really at the core for us uh, African Americans or black people or whatever you want to refer to us as who are still bickering about this? Can we dialogue about some of the uh, mental, spiritual, and um, emotional uh the crux or the core of the matter. When can we get beyond the physical and how important is it? And enlighten me, please, because I am a lifelong learner and there may be something that some of you people who um, go ham about this issue uh, have something to say that makes some sense. You know, so just enlighten me. I want to know what you got to say. Love to you, ladies. And I'm going back upstairs to relax. Have a beautiful weekend. It is Thursday evening. Tomorrow is Friday. And uh, yeah, have a lovely weekend. Love to you all. Peace, light, love, and happiness. Okay, but balance. You can have peace, light, love, and happiness, but you're not going to let somebody kick your butt out there either, right? So we need a balance. That's all. We just need some balance. <laughs> Bye.